So your nutritional status matters a lot. The protein intake matters a lot. The variety of macronutrients and micronutrients, your vitamins, your minerals, all of that status in your tissues matters. So sometimes we have to supplement with some things. I think magnesium is a really logical supplement because our soils are severely depleted all over the world, particularly in the US. And so I really don't think that most people have adequate magnesium status, no matter their best efforts with their nutrition. Uh, zinc is another wonderful supplement to bring on board because again, these minerals are harder to get as our soils become depleted. And zinc is prevalent actually mostly in red meat. I believe that beef, red meat in general, is a beautiful source of bioavailable zinc. And it's the kind of zinc that easily gets into our cells. Zinc has a hard time getting into our cells. That's why quercetin is helpful because it's an ionophore. It helps the zinc get into the cell. And zinc inhibits viral replication. And so having adequate zinc stores on board is helpful. Now, it's difficult to get there. Having white spots on your fingernails is kind of a giveaway that you might have some zinc absorption issues or maybe you're low in zinc. Check with your doctor, of course. But that said, pounding zinc in pill form right at the last minute is generally not as helpful as you would think it would be because it's hard to get it into the cell and it's hard to build up your stores. So I really prefer red meat and then I will do some supplemental zinc. The thing about zinc though is it gets funny. You can take too much and inhibit your immune system. And a lot of people don't realize that. So zinc has a sweet spot. So talk to your healthcare practitioner, find out what's best for you, of course, always. And remember that Zinc is a belly bomber. <laughs> if you take it on an empty stomach, you are going to feel like throwing up. So I prefer to take it at night. Personally, after I've had a little bit of food in my stomach, I take it at night and that way I don't get the belly bomb effect. So just be careful of that. A lot of people give up on zinc because they swear it makes them ill. And I'm like, no, you're taking it on an empty stomach or just maybe during the daylight awake hours, it's not your best friend. So something to consider. I do think that there are different forms of zinc out there, but zinc is zinc and zinc is always a belly bomber and zinc has a hard time getting in the cells. So eat your red meat if you're into that. I hope you are. I think beef is a really beautiful source of many micronutrients that are hard to get elsewhere and it has a very lovely absorbable form of zinc in it. Another thing that I think is a beautiful supplemental um, intervention is vitamin C. Interestingly, all mammals make their own vitamin C, except for hamsters, gerbils, and humans. So we don't make our own vitamin C, and it's helpful when it comes to dealing with immune anything. It works as an anti-inflammatory in the body. It works as an antioxidant. It does a lot of cool things in the body. And I think that it's very safe. We pee it out if we take too much and it'll tell you, like your bowels will let you know. Same with magnesium. Your bowels will let you know when you've had too much. So I love vitamin C, I love zinc, and I love magnesium. I think those are just kind of gimmies when it comes to that season of the year. Another one that can be helpful, of course, is vitamin D. Vitamin D has been shown to be very helpful. And now it's correlative, not causative, but we have many correlative studies showing adequate vitamin D blood levels and reduced risk for poor outcomes with upper respiratory viruses. So having your D stores really ideal and optimized as we go into the season. This is why I start my family on all of these things this time of year, late summer. And I say, let's get serious guys, because we're going into the Oregon winter, which has its own issues. You know, some people live in really cold climates and those cold climates are going to just suck all of the vapor out of the air and all the humidity out of the air, which makes viruses actually more uh, resilient to being in the air. They don't, they just have a little more tendency to stick around in those really dehydrated places of super cold, cold. We live in Oregon where it is more moisture, but it's so wet and damp. It like gets in your bones and it can just wear you down. And so the end of summer when the, you know, dog days of summer, it's hot out, but it's windy out here in Oregon. I know the seasons are changing. I get up in the morning to go out with my dogs and I'm like, whoo, it's the seasons are changing. So this is the time we start our supplemental protocol in my family and something I suggest to my patients as well. I'm just sharing this as an educational resource for you. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just sharing out what I know, what I've known for decades. None of this came about in 2020. This is what I have known 
for, I can't even tell you how long, like I said, I had the honor of working with a really brilliant naturopathic physician who taught me all of this many decades ago. So C, very safe. Zinc, make sure you're working with somebody. Magnesium, if you take too much, you'll get the runs. And those are great places to start. Vitamin D, definitely get your levels checked because interestingly, you may not be getting enough. There are reasons why people don't absorb the D or don't actually end up with really good blood stores of the form of D that we want. And one of them is the uh, having excess adipose on your body. If you have extra fat on your body and that fat is pro-inflammatory, it can definitely lead to lower vitamin D levels in your blood. So it's the 25 OH we're testing for, and that can be lower when you are tending more towards an obesogenic state, which I believe, and the studies are showing, comes down to the inflammatory response in the body. So something to consider. Um, I like to get my vitamin D stores up via skin exposure, and I think that that's a really beautiful way to do it if you're not afraid of the sun. Your risk tolerance to sun exposure is up to you. I'm not going to tell you to go out and sunbathe and tell you it's entirely void of uh, risks, right? Like there is definitely skin cancer to be concerned about. I've done several episodes about, I, I recently interviewed a brilliant dermatologist. He's very pro sunblock. I should say sunscreen. And he's very much about staying out of the sun. Um, I did a safe sunning episode. Again, not medical advice. We have different skin types. We all have different skin types. We have different risk tolerance. We have different exposure histories. So I'm not telling you to go out and bake in the sun, but I'm not afraid of the sun personally. I will say it's definitely aging my skin. <laughs> 